How do I sound? Good. Hi, this is Steve from Film Runner Media, and today we're here to talk about the Rode Roadlink News Shooter Kit. It's a wireless digital kit, and uh, well, you can't see it right now because I have the mic boomed just above my head. <laughs> so this is a wireless kit with a um, XLR plug-on transmitter and a uh, camera top receiver. So I'm working on a series of videos with a friend of mine and the deal is it's an ongoing thing where I go over to my friend's house once a week. I try to do a really quick setup with lights and microphone and camera and we're recording like this ongoing series of educational videos. And it occurred to me, like, as I'm going to be doing this for a while, that it would be really nice to have a wireless overhead boom. Just to save that amount of time that I have to run the wire from the microphone to the camera. And I've seen these um, XLR plug-on transmitters before, and they never really excited me that much um, until I started doing this project. So I have a couple of wireless kits already. I have two Sennheiser kits. I have G4. I have the... Uh, 512 professional kit and I have the 112 you know kit which is still pretty good but it's not top level professional um, so I have these two kits and so I started looking into like what are the options for an XLR plug-on transmitter I have a couple of really nice microphones I have a Sennheiser MKH50 microphone and I have the Rode NTG4 Plus which you're listening to right now you know my, my major requirement for this kit was that I needed it to have phantom power and so as I started looking through what options were available, I found two basic options that really would work for me. And um, two and a half options, actually. <laughs> so, so one was to get the Sennheiser XLR plug-on transmitter that would work with my existing kits. And so I would have to buy the professional one, the, you know, the 500 series that would provide the phantom power. And the other option you know, would, would be to buy the entire kit, the plug-on transmitter and the receiver. So that way I could still use two wireless labs and have a wireless boom if, if I ever needed it. And then I found this Rode kit. And so basically what it came down to was that I could get the Rode kit, you know, the, the transmitter and the receiver for the same price as just buying the transmitter from Sennheiser. And I believe that the Sennheiser is probably much better quality. Um, yeah, I, I trust it a little bit better. But, you know, f for the money, for the application that I'm doing, I didn't really need it to be like five out of five stars. I thought four out of five stars is probably good enough. And I also found a good deal on this kit on eBay. So I saved $100 and that's what really kind of cemented it for me. So that's why I ended up ultimately deciding to go with the Rode road link new shooter kit so when the kit arrived i opened it up you know you have two boxes one comes for the uh receiver and one comes for the transmitter i found it a little bit difficult to pair them for the first time because it it's not like you just set the frequency like on an analog system and they just automatically connect on this kit because it's digital and they make a peer-to-peer -peer connection you do have to actually like pair them together so i did have to open up the little quick start guide and figure that part out but within about 10 minutes or so i was up and running just like my other wireless kits i'm i'm used to using them you know setup was fairly simple i just attached the a receiver on top of the the shoe mount on top of the camera put the microphone on a boom if you're used to using Rode microphones um, this was a nice feature um, so at first because I, I had been using you know a Rode video mic pro or the Rode video mic NTG that usually I use that plus 20 decibel boost when I'm plugging the mic directly into a camera so you get the best sound quality out of the microphone with the, the least amount of noise from the camera's preamps because you know cameras don't have the best preamps by any means. Um, on this kit at first I had to turn up the gain on my camera up to about halfway to get a, a proper level where I'm you know peaking at around minus 12 dB but then I found on the transmitter that there was um, a plus 10 plus 20 db switch so i ended up engaging that and now i have the microphone level set to about the same level where i would set if i'm using my video mic ntg i haven't put it into my computer yet to see on the you know what what the actual levels are <clears throat> but it does appear that it has fairly decent uh performance as far as self noise goes as far as the transmission and, and the the level it's it's getting 
Um, I did, you know, listen through headphones through my camera on a playback, and it, it sounded pretty good. You know, I know I can get better quality. I have external recorders, and I know that they have better performance and better low noise. But for this type of setup, what I'm really trying to do is something practical and quick where I can just record directly into the camera, set up on location, and shoot, you know, within minutes without having to set up an, an external recorder, run a cable. But so far, so good. I'm pretty happy with the results so far. Especially, um, I'm making this video as a test so that I can see it for myself, what it's going to come out and when I put it you know, on the computer and start running through it and, and listening to it through headphones, how it's really going to sound to me then. So just as an extra test, I've plugged in my Sennheiser MKH-50 microphone. And that would normally be the microphone I'd choose to use indoors um, because it's a super cardioid microphone and it's going to um, work better, theoretically work better in a or reflective environment where you're getting a little bit of echoes from the walls and things. The Rode NTG4 is really my choice for the outdoor microphone when I'm trying to get the most rejection of ambient noise. Um, but this this is more of a microphone that I would typically use indoors. You know, if this is probably the microphone I would use for my projects, if I can use the best one I have, then, you know, for, for an indoor setting, then that's probably what I'm gonna choose to use. And I wanna see how it sounds. Now, we're, we're not really in a perfect environment here because um, I live in a crowded area, so I, I can hear noise from outside. This isn't exactly a perfect, you know, in-depth scientific review. I'm just making like a practical first case study of, of how this microphone works to see if it's something that I'm going to use, you know, is it going to be worth it for the convenience of having a wireless setup or is it going to be better to be, you know, more reliable and have that wire there? That's what we're here today to figure out. And the last thing I wanted to do today was show you that this transmitter actually comes with a TRS input for a lav microphone. So I have the Countryman EMW microphone attached with a Viper clip here under my shirt. And I wanted to see how that sounds. You could get an idea. You have to take into consideration, you know, the types of microphones I'm using. They're all different microphones. So, you know, if depending on what microphone you use the sound might come out a little bit differently for you and what type of environment you're recording in so i happen to have quite a fair bit of ambient noise in here <laughs> not coming from this room but coming out from outside of this room so that's something to take into consideration but um, you can see um you know in, in a fairly practical sense uh, how this transmitter works so i thought this was a little funny at first how it came with this um pouch for the transmitter but then i realized what it's for is that it has a the belt clip on it so that if you're using this transmitter in a case we're using it with a microphone you know with a lav mic then you can you know attach this to the to the talent you know to a belt so it's definitely not as form-fitting as <laughs> my other transmitters but um you know, in a case where I'm doing um, ENG documentary interviews, things like that, it's it'll be just fine. Somebody could put it in their pocket. You know, typically I try not to show people um, people's laps anyway, um, or you know, but it, we, it's definitely usable in, in a pinch. You know, and considering I have two other kits, I th I think it's great that now that I have that option that I can either. Wow. And let's do one final test. Now this is not typically how I would choose to use this system, but I wanted to see how it's gonna sound with a cheaper microphone, with a dynamic microphone. This is a Samsung Q2U microphone. I've seen people do this when they're out in public and they're doing interviews at like crowded events, like NAB events and stuff like, like that. They choose to use a dynamic microphone. There is a model of this kit that comes with the Rode Reporter microphone, which is a, a dynamic microphone, which is going to reject a lot more ambient noise because you have to get a lot closer to the mic when you're speaking. But just to do, uh, you know, one more test. So just to see how does this sound connected wirelessly with the Rode Rode Link new shooter kit. And I kind of messed up before. I was using the Rode NTG4 microphone and I took the furry wind cover off, but I still had the high frequency boost on, which, which you use to kind of compensate for the furry wind cover. So in case my sound is a little more sibilant or boosted in the high frequencies, that would be why. I'm also using the um, high pass filter to eliminate low frequency rumble which you know, I, I typically use because I'm typically recording in environments with air conditioner on and things like that that you know, I just can't really be bothered 
with. I just I just leave it on most of the time because it, it doesn't really affect the sound too much, especially on on this microphone, the Rode NTG4, the um, you know the low frequency roll off or the high pass filter. It's subtle. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, so I don't notice too much of a difference when I use it. So I tend to just leave it on for for safety for me. Um, but other people might have a different philosophy about that. So now I've attached the uh, furry wind cover back onto the Rode NTG4 and so you can hear what it, what that's going to sound like which is really more of a coming from the microphone not so much from the wireless system um, so we'll see how that sounds it's typically how I use it I, the, the, usually with my Rode NTG4 the furry wind cover just lives on it because it's just easier for me so I typically just use it with it all the time I want to see how it sounds and just get an idea you know what what you might have to expect if you're using this type of setup in the same way that i do where you're just using a wireless microphone directly into the camera and what you can expect that to sound like so this is pretty interesting it's begun to rain but a good thing i got most of the video out of the way <laughs> so um just want to say my name is steve i'm from film runner media um, I don't typically do reviews of gear because there's enough people out there already doing it. Um, but I hadn't really seen a lot of people talking about this setup in this use case scenario. Um, so I thought I'd make it just in case anybody out there is interested in this system and wants to see you know, how it sounds and, and how it is to set it up. I do a lot of documentary work, talking head stuff, mostly amateur semi-pro type work um, for friends of mine and, and for passion projects, you know, things that I'm interested in doing. I'm not going to tell you that you need to subscribe to my channel, but I am trying to get 100 subscribers so that I can, you know, get my own custom URL. So <laughs> if, the, if you feel like helping a brother out, you know, please hit that subscribe button. If you have questions about this kit, you know, I really love talking to people. I love talking to people on YouTube, um, people, you know, th that I subscribe to their channels. I love asking them questions and getting feedback from them. So... I'm here to do the same for you. Like YouTube is like such a great community and I love it. And um, I actually deleted some of my other social media accounts recently just because I'm not really interested in, you know, the type of conversations that we have. I, I like YouTube. I like filmmakers. I love uh, production sound I love all that stuff. So if you have any questions or anything that I miss, because, you know, just trying to get through this and, <laughs> and show, show you what it sounds like. So I, I didn't do an exhaustive review, but if you have any s questions that I might be able to help you out with, please just hit me up in the comments section. Thanks so much.